everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to my channel, Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to the channel, a big hello. I bring you bookish content focused on food writing. This can be anything from food memoirs to even some food fiction. Today is Independent Bookstore Day, also known as hashtag Indie Bookstore Day. And this is an opportunity for everyone to go out or order online, support your independent bookstores. Small businesses and independent bookstores have been hugely impacted by the coronavirus and to me, what better way to spend a Saturday than to check out a bunch of Chicago independent bookstores. So Dan, my fiance, accompanied me. We hit up, I think, a total of five different bookstores. I tried to limit it to one book a piece per store, but anyway, I'm here to show you everything I got. So if you hear any noise, my cat is off camera playing with a toy and refuses to leave the room. And if I shut the door to the room, he then begins to meow and cry. So bear with me if you hear some cat noises in the background. I'm going to go in reverse chronological order and also insert some shots of what each bookstore looked like. I first want to start off by saying that all the bookstores did a really great job accommodating in-person shopping. Everywhere you know, they were pacing how many people could come into the store at a time. There were gloves provided, sanitizer, you had to have a mask. And it was, I felt really safe and comfortable being there. If you don't feel comfortable going into a store, that's totally okay. Independent indie book, indie bookstore day is really being extended to the whole, through the whole weekend, which is why I worked really quickly to get this video up to remind you guys that you can buy books online straight from the retail from each bookstore and you're still supporting. So one of the first books I got is White Bread and I picked this up at Afterwards Bookstore in Chicago. Now you can order books online through Afterwards website or you can go through bookshop.org and select them as your preferred bookstore. Bookshop.org gives 10% back to support independent bookstores. So every time you buy a book, you're helping bookstores in general, but you do have the option to select a specific bookstore. So back to the book. White Bread, A Social History of the Store-Bought Loaf by Aaron Bobro Strain. I loved the endorsement on the front. A this terrific book does for the humble loaf what Mark Kurlansky does for Cod. If you've been on my channel before, you know I'm a big fan of Mark Kurlansky. I do have his book Cod. I will be reading his book Salt on my honeymoon. Yes, we're going to a cabin in the middle of the woods and yes, we're going to read books and yes, that's an amazing honeymoon. Anyway, how did white bread, once an icon of American progress, become white trash? In this lively history of bakers, dietary crusaders, and social reformers, Aaron Bobrow Strain, argues that what we think about the humble, puffy loaf says a lot about who we are and what we want our society to look like. Another book I picked up this time, new location, I grabbed this book at Unabridged Bookstores. This is Rebel Chef by Dominique Crenn. I actually have the audiobook for this and I thought Indie Bookstore Day was a great day to buy hard copies. I've said this before, but every time I buy an audiobook, I'm always going to buy a hard copy as well. And I already have, you know, 70 plus books on my TBR. So this was a great kind of compromise in a way. I still got to support a bookstore, still got a book that I knew I was going to buy. So this book is by the time, sorry, I'll read the inside cover for you. By the time Dominique Crenn decided to become a chef at the age of 21, she knew it was, near it was a near impossible dream in France where almost all restaurant kitchens were run by men. So she left home and everything she knew to move to San Francisco where she would train under the legend legendary Jeremiah Tower. Almost 30 years later, Crenn was awarded three Michelin stars in 2018 for her influential restaurant, Atelier Crenn and became the first female chef in the United States to receive this honor. No small feat for someone who hadn't gone to culinary school or been formally trained. I learned about Dominique Crenn from Top Chef Masters of all places, and I bought her audiobook, and I'm really excited to now also have a hard copy. Okay, book three and bookstore number three on the list. This is Mince Meat. I got this book at Bookseller, Play on words, bookseller with an S, but the store is bookseller with a C in Chicago. Mincemeat, an education of an Italian chef by Leonardo Lucarelli. 
Mincemeat, The Education of an Italian Chef by Leonardo Lucarelli. I bought a couple of memoirs actually on this trip now, but I'm looking at my pile. In Italy, five-star restaurants and celebrity chefs may seem, on the surface, part of the landscape. That's kind of true. In the reality, the restaurant industry is as tough, cutthroat, and unforgiving as anyone else in the world. Anywhere else in the world, sorry. Sometimes even colluding with the shady world of organized crime. The powerful voice of Leonardo Lucarelli takes us through the underbelly of Italy's restaurant world. Lu Lucarelli is a professional chef for, for who Lucarelli is a professional chef who for almost two decades has been roaming Italy, opening restaurants, training underpaid, sometimes hopelessly incompetent sous chefs, courting waitresses, working long hours, riding high on drugs, and cursing a culinary passion he inherited as a teenager from his hippie father. In his debut, Mincemeat, the education of an Italian chef, Lucarelli teaches us that even among rogues and misfits, there is a moral code in the kitchen that must, above all else, always be upheld. When I think of the restaurant world and this unspoken like hierarchy and rules, it reminds me a lot of Anthony Bourdain's debut work in Kitchen Confidential. There is this unspoken code and hierarchy that really exists in chefs and in restaurants, and I'm excited to see what the perspective is from Italy. So, Bookseller is a small independent bookstore in Chicago. This one is female owned. The is female owned. Another stop on our indie bookstore tour was Volume Books Cafe in Wicker Park. So this bookstore actually has this store. This shop has two different locations, but we went to the one in Wicker Park. And actually, really funny story about this one. After we had gone shopping at this bookstore, Dan and I walked out to the car, you know, to get ready to hit up the next store, and the streets blocked off. There are three fire trucks and two ambulances, and we're both going, what is going on? And there is a fire, like, right down the street. And guess whose car is in the middle of all that chaos? Mine. Um, and you know, we wanted to get, we just wanted to be out of the way. So we asked a police officer, like, should we move our car? Like, are we in the way? Cause at this point, like the hoses are attached to the hydrants. Like there is a real fire here. And they just yelled at us to go across the street, which we did, which fine. And then we waited about 30 minutes. And once one of the fire trucks started park, um, excuse me, packing up, we asked a different police officer, I guess they had moved locations or something, um, if we could leave. And we had to wait for the fire truck to do this giant K turn to leave. And once they did, the police officer let us through. It was a very nice officer. But we were both just standing there like, uh, our car is like three feet from one of the fire trucks that's putting out a fire. And then when we got in our car, I swear, after like the air conditioning and the cooling system turned on, our car smelled like smoke. Thankfully, we left within a half hour, which means nobody was hurt or harmed from the fire. It was settling down and et cetera. So no one was hurt and that's really what matters. And again, we, we didn't want to inconvenience the police officers. We just thought the car was like in the way. Um, you know, I didn't want to get in anyone's way. But anyway, fun story about our trip to Volume Books. So Volume Books in Wicker Park, I picked up this book. Um, first off, look how gorgeous this is. I have never seen a food book with a more beautiful cover, hands down. This is The Monk of Mocha by Dave Eggers. The Monk of Mocha is the true story of a young Yemeni American man raised in San Francisco who dreams of resurrecting the ancient art of Yemeni coffee, but finds himself trapped in Sana's, trapped in Sana, I'm probably saying that wrong, sorry, by civil war. Mokhtar al Kanashi. Al Kanash Ali is 24 and working as a doorman when he becomes fascinated by the rich history of coffee and Yemen's central place in it. He leaves San Francisco and travels deep into his ancestral home to tour terraced farms high in the country's rugged mountains. When war engulfs the country and Saudi bombs rain down, Mokhtar has to find a way out of Yemen with his only hopes on his back. So pretty cool book. Volume Books is female owned. You can also use a coupon code, which I'll put somewhere around, um, to, to order books online. So again, if you don't, you know, if you're not in Chicago, first off, you can still order books online with the code and really support a small independent bookstore. 
Okay, final place we went to is a place you guys have heard me talk about a lot, which is Open Books Chicago. Just another heads up, I am still trying to raise $500 for their partnership fundraiser with Run for Violence, which is to bring awareness, um, again, bring awareness to gun violence, end gun violence in Chicago, and Open Books' team that I'm on is called Team Booking It, because you know, booking it like you're moving in a hurry. I thought that was super cute. Um, so the link to donate is in my description below. If you have any means, every dollar counts. And Open Books has a lot of books. They are used books, and I am a member, so I also automatically get 10% off. So I picked up three books. I know I was really trying to only get one book per store, but I got three books for $15. The first one I got is by John Crampner. This is Creamy and Crunchy, an informal history of peanut butter, the all-American food. There's the cover. I have seen this book at Open Books for months now. I've been waiting for a chance to get it, and I got it for $5 on Indie Bookstore Day, and I thought there was no better day to grab it. I was also just reading, reading, I was just listening to a podcast episode by Gastropod, and they were just covering peanut butter. And I was like, this is top of mind. I really want to try this. Next book I picked up is Cooked by Michael Pollan. So this book I actually just finished as an audiobook, so you will hear more about it in my monthly wrap up for August. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth. I have read Michael Pollan's other two books. Um, I have read The Botany of Dis I have read The Omnivore's Dilemma and I have listened to his three hour three hour audiobook coffee that's only available on Audible. The final book I have. For God, Country, and Coca-Cola, The Definitive History of the Great American Soft Drink and the Company That Makes It by Mark Pendergrast, author of Uncommon Grounds. Uncommon Grounds is a book about coffee, by the way, which is still on my list to buy. So this is, this is hefty, hefty book. Um, oh, well, I guess the good news is <laughs> about 150 pages are the appendix. But that's still, it's still, you know, 455 pages. But I saw that you guys really liked the sweet series and I was trying to think of other things besides just chocolate and cake that would be sweet and part of our, part of food history that would be interesting. And I thought talking about Coca-Cola would be really fun. So those were all of the books I have grabbed in person. I also did pick up, let's see if it focuses. Oh, I did. There we go. I also got a candle, Book Lover Soy Candle for Bookstore Day. It, it smells like sandalwood, oak, and leaves. I've already lit it and just, I love this smell. I love the smell of sandalwood. Now, it doesn't necessarily smell like books, which I'm sure the, I'm sure the nerdy narrative would understand because she and I are very similar. She sniffs all of the books that she picks up that are new. I'm the same way. If the book doesn't have a smell, I'm almost disappointed, so... So there were two independent bookstores that I wanted to support but didn't get a chance to go to in person. One is Semicolon Bookstore. This is female-owned, black-owned independent bookstore in Chicago. Please support them. They actually today were they were partaking in this program called Clear the Shelves where they let students, young children come and literally clear the shelves and take as many books as they want so that we're inspiring another generation of readers. So First off, I didn't want to be someone who got in the way of what was going on by being a casual shopper. But I, I've already bought a shirt from them. I got a couple books from them this month. I had actually won a gift card via HarperCollins to support an independent bookstore. And I used my $100 gift card to support Semicolon and bought uh, five books with them. I also have a t-shirt coming from them. I did want to buy a book today, so I bought Taste of Sage. This is a fiction book. The female protagonist has the ability to feel emotions when she eats your food. So she tried to open her own restaurant in Manhattan that failed. So now she's out of money and struggling and she's taken up a job under a really pompous jackass kind of chef. So she's the sous chef underneath him and she refuses to try his food because he just seems like such a jerk and she doesn't want to taste those emotions. But she finally caves and does and it is delicious. And I'm sure there's some sexual chemistry there, there's tension. Uh, and I'm excited to read a fiction book. Also, it just seemed fun. Another bookstore I wanted to support was 
book review on Long Island. Now, I am from Long Island. I grew up in the um, Suffolk County area, and I grew up going to this bookstore called Book Review, so I had to support them too. I picked up a book called Fruit from the Sand. So this is a book I actually got as an audiobook first, and I'm really struggling to read it, uh, listen to it. I just don't like this narrator. And if you've watched my other video, which I'll link in the cards, about audiobooks, sometimes a book can be great, but the audiobook, if, if you don't engage with the narrator right away, I find it, it can be really painful and de devastating to the book. So again, I this is a book, I always buy hard copies of every audiobook I listen to. So I'm, I bought this book hoping that maybe it'll be better as a read than it is right now listening to it. So jumping in and kind of pivoting slightly, I, though, so those were all of the independent bookstores I have supported today, all of the books I grabbed today, and a candle. Don't forget the candle. I also got in the mail, and I just am so excited, I had to share. I also got Darius the Great Deserves Better. I loved Darius the Great is Not Okay when I read it last year. Um, Adib Koram is Persian American like I am. So Darius the Great Deserves Better just came today. I pre-ordered this back in March. I read Darius the Great Is Not Okay last year in the spring, and that book is really important to me. I read it right when I had learned about my dad's cancer diagnosis with pancreatic cancer, and I'm half Persian American, I'm Persian American, Darius in the book is Persian American, he doesn't speak Farsi, I speak, I don't speak Farsi, I just, I really, really resonated, um, there's, some can there's some cancer conflict within the book. Um, it was really powerful in a book I didn't know I needed when I read it at the time. I also listened to it as an audiobook, and I remember being on the plane actually to fly home to see my, my dad, my family, and I just remember bawling. And I, a lot of books don't make me cry that often. Also, I read a lot of food, food books, so food books don't normally make me cry, let's be honest. So when I knew that there was a sequel coming out, I just, I had to support this author, support your authors of color. It's really important to diversify your reading and again this is this is young adult fiction contemporary fiction nothing to do with food books at all i mean darius as a protagonist is very interested in steeping teas and learning about all different types of tea so there is a little bit of food but that's not why i'm reading it i that book the first book darius the great is not okay was really important to me and i will forever support this author i'm very excited to read this i think i'm honestly going to do a separate review just of this book in both darius books i think just because i really want to promote this author and promote these works so that is everything for indie bookstore day this saturday I'm exhausted. I'm going to try and edit this as quickly as I can so I can get it up on Saturday night so that you guys have all day Sunday to support your independent bookstores as well. Remember, if you're not comfortable going in person, you can order books online straight from the bookstore. Most bookstores will ship for free above $25 anywhere in the United States. I don't know what the policy is overseas. I'm, I'm not even going to pretend they do. If you liked this video and you want to see more bookish foodie content, Give this video a like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Stay safe, wear a mask, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.